Hello and welcome to part 24 of my video series on how to use Blender 2.6. In this video I'm going to cover how to render an animation out to a movie file in Blender. Many of you have asked, so I'm finally catching up on this topic. I haven't really covered it fully before. So here we go. When you animate in Blender, you're going to be of course moving your objects and using your timeline to record keyframes of objects at different locations at different times, of course. Uh, when you're animating, you're probably going to use another window called a dope sheet, which I talked about in my Animation 101 video lesson, which I'll link to on the screen right now. So we'll want to divide the screen in two by dragging on that little top corner area and dragging it down and changing this to a dope sheet right there. I'm going to go ahead and make a quick animation of my cube moving. So I have to turn on my record button. We're on frame one right now, which is great. I'm going to go ahead and make my cube be over there on frame one. And it made a keyframe because I have my record button turned on and I move the object. I'm going to go to frame 40 and we'll move the cube across the screen and it made a second keyframe and we have an animation. I can scrub through and there's my animation. I'm going to go ahead, ahead and turn animation off and press 0 to look through my camera. Now when you're rendering a movie or an image in 3D from Blender, you're going to always be rendering from the camera's point of view. So you can, before you render, place the camera wherever you want to get the right shot. Um, you can even animate the camera if you want a moving camera shot, which can be a little bit tricky, and you could get mixed results with that, but you can do it. Um, we have 250 frames in our timeline. We only need 40 because we will only want to render out the first 40 frames of this animation. So under the timeline, there is a section for the end uh, frame. I'm going to change this by clicking on it to 40 by typing 40 and pressing enter. When you're rendering out, you need to decide what the resolution of your movie is going to be and what aspect ratio your camera is. Over here in the properties window, under the camera tab, which is the render tab, um, there is a heading called dimensions, and this is where you can choose the resolution of your movie. The resolution right now is 1920 by 1080, which is the resolution of a high-res TV, an HDTV, is 1080p because the height is 1080, but it's turned down to 50% in size, so both of those numbers get cut in half, so we actually get a video that's a quarter of that size in total. I'm going to turn that up to 100%, and I'm going to change this value to 1280 by 720 and press enter. 1280 by 720 is 720p, which is a resolution more common for lower end high def TVs and for YouTube and online streaming video. Um, because I changed the value of the end frame to 40 down here under my timeline, it changed over here. So my frame range is the start frame is frame 1 and the end frame is frame 40. If I change the aspect ratio of this um, resolution, so if I changed it to 720, by 720, the aspect ratio of my camera would change as well to reflect. I can always scroll up and scroll down to zoom in and zoom out on from the camera's point of view, but it won't zoom in and zoom out unless you have a different option checked, which I'm not going to get to in this video. Okay, so I'm going to change this back to 1280, and there is our scene. So let's go through and make sure that everything can be seen from that point of view. Um, I don't mind that that camera angle. Of course I could change it, but I'm not going to in this video. So next thing we have to talk about is the frame rate. We animated at 24 frames per second, which means that we liked the speed that it was going when we animated it, um, or hopefully. If I change the frame rate right now, it would make my animation go either slower or faster. Of course if I change my frame rate to 50 or to 60 frames per second, my animation would go a lot um, quicker. So I want to keep it at the frame rate that I animated at. So we're not going to change it from 24. 24 is pretty standard. It's the standard for film at the theater, um, and it's a pretty good number. It's uh, nothing, nothing wrong with that. When we render out, we need to tell Blender where we want to save to, of course. We're making a movie file, so we have to, under the output section, define where we want to save this movie. I'm going to click on a little folder icon. This brings up the save dialog box. I'm going to go to my desktop, and we're going to export to a new folder. We can create a new folder by clicking on Create New Directory. If it will let me. And I can type in the new directory name. Uh, I can go back one up and right click hopefully on it. Mm. 
Let's see. No, I can't rename it from here as far as I can tell. So I'm just going to create a new one and type in immediately um, box underscore animation and press enter and then double click on box animation. You're probably wondering why I made a new folder instead of just saving onto my desktop and that's because we're going to actually be exporting still images instead of um, a movie file itself and I'll explain that in a sec. Um, this top bar here describes the folder in which we'll be saving to. This bottom bar will let us type in a file name. Now because we're going to be rendering out to still images, it'll add whatever we type in here. It'll add to the end on a sequence of numbers describing the frame number that is being rendered out. So frame 1 will be um, 0001, frame 2 will be 0002, etc. If we leave this area blank, it'll just name the images or file um, the, the frame number or the frame numbers or the frame range. Uh, so I'll press accept and I think we are all set to go except we have to do change the file or choose a file type. Um, under the output section there is a label that says PNG or menu. You can pull that up and this is where you can describe or choose what file type you're saving to. You can render either out to a still image file type like a bitmap, a JPEG, a PNG, um, a TIFF, etc or you can render out to a movie file. Now these are kind of dangerous because when you're rendering out you want the best quality possible and rendering to a movie file means that you have to render out the entire thing and if you have a long, long animation that can be quite an investment in time and um, you don't know the quality that you're going to get until you open it up after it's finished rendering. If you render to a sequence of images there are many benefits. The first benefit is of course that you get to see the quality of the render and how the, the render looks frame by frame um, as they render out. And if your computer crashes midway through you can always just keep on rendering from the last frame that was uh, left or you can start rendering from the first frame that wasn't rendered in, in your sequence. From a movie file if you're computer crashes or their power goes out, etc. Um, your movie file might be damaged, uh, you'll have to repair it, and that's a lot of headache. So rendering onto a still image is recommended. I'm going to export to a PNG image sequence, which means that um, well, PNGs are a file type that's compressed, like a JPEG, but they're better quality. They're called lossless, um, or it's a lossless image file type, which means that it does not get worse in quality when you compress it. So it's a good uh, file type for the most part. Um, if you want to render out to a sequence with transparency, uh, PNGs do support transparency. So you can export with RGBA. A stands for alpha, RGB is red, green, and blue. But we're just going to leave it on RGB for the colors and have no transparency. Um, last thing I'm going to do is add a quick floor. I realize I don't have a floor in my animation. So I'm going to go ahead and press 1, uh, press Shift C to get my cursor back in the middle. And maybe I'll press 5 if that's not set up correctly. There we go, 5. And I'll press Shift A to add a ground plane if my computer will catch up to me. And we'll scale that up S10 to make it big. I'm going to go ahead and add a material to that. So I'm going to go ahead to the Material tab in the Properties window and add a new material. And this material is going to act kind of like a blue screen. It's going to have only a shadow, but not have any solid material to it. So you can add any background color uh, you like, um, but it won't show up except for the shadow that the object on it casts. This is kind of like one of those Mac PC commercials where there's two people standing, but the world that they're in um, is just one solid color, but they still have shadows as if they were standing on an invisible ground. Same thing with this. So to make that material, you're going to make a new default material just by clicking New. Go down to the Shadow section and choose Shadows Only, and then change the dialog box below it or the menu to Shadow Only. I'm going to go ahead and give my cube a material. So I'm going to um, back up to the cube. We're going to change the material. It already had one for some reason to a nice yellow color. And I'm going to turn on ambient occlusion and change that factor to 0 0.5. I talked about using ambient occlusion in another video. I can link to that on the screen right now if you haven't seen it already. And I think we're ready to render. Let's just quickly review the render settings. We're rendering out to 720p at 100%, frame 1 to frame 40 at 24 frames per second. We're rendering out to the desktop into a folder called box animation. And we're rendering out as PNG 
uh, image files at 90% compression with RGB red, green, and blue. I'm going to go ahead and press animation, which means it will render out the animation. And you can see it going right there. We've got a gray background. In fact, we could change that if we wanted to. We can press escape and escape. And I'll change my background color or the horizon color under my world tab to a lighter gray just because. And if I press animation again, it'll write over all those JPEGs that it was making, or PNGs rather, that we were making before. So I'll press animation. It's a lighter world. And you can see already a little bit of a shadow um, underneath that cube. Now while this is happening, you can actually go and take a look at the images that are, it is rendering. Up here in the top left hand corner, it says FRA, which stands for frame, and that number will count up as your, friender, as your frames uh, render. So it's on frame 5 right now, we're going to frame 40. I'm going to quickly go over and check out the folder called Box Animation, which I made just a second ago. And it has my frames in it. And you can actually sit, sit here and watch it fill up with more frames. I just just run out of frame 7. And now 8. I can double click on it already. And there's my frame 1. I'll mouse over in this program. Um, and we can kind of see the frames as they progress the quality. Okay, I'm going to pause the video now. And we'll come back when the render is finished. Alright, so finished rendering, I can press escape to get back to my 3D viewport. Um, one thing I forgot to explain actually what rendering was. So what rendering actually is, when the process of rendering happens, what's happening is that your, uh, your, your blender is calculating all the light in the scene and how the light bounces into the camera's lens. That's how cameras work. That's how camera works in 3D as well. The more objects that you have in your scene and the more complicated things, the more um, vertexes and faces and edges you have in your scene, the more complicated it will be and the longer it will take to render. I turned on ambient occlusion earlier and that slowed down my render considerably. So anything that you do to your scene, adding more things, adding more effects, will take longer to render. I'm going to go ahead and close this this project. I don't need to save it because I don't really care about it too much. And in this box animation folder is all of my 40 frames in PNGs. That's great, but we want a movie file. So let's go back into Blender. And if you watched my video lesson on camera tracking, you'll have seen me use the video or the window rather. Um, called the Video Sequence Editor. And the Video Sequence Editor is like a video editor, like iMovie, or Windows Movie Maker, or Adobe Premiere, or um, Final Cut Pro, or Final Cut Express. Um, this is a timeline for video clips, images, and sounds, etc. Um, we can add a video screen to this section by clicking on the, um, the checkerboard, um, in the bottom header of this window, which will add or make the entire thing into a video screen. Or we can click on the next one over, which will give us a half and half split. So we've got a video screen and a timeline for video clips and sound clips. I'm going to go ahead and add those still images. So I'm going to go to Add and Movie, actually. And we'll find that folder on my desktop. It's called Box Animation, of course. But when you get into that folder, you're not going to find any images. And that's because we haven't told Blender to display images when we're looking for a, mo a movie file. We can do that or have Blender display all the images um, if we click on this little icon, the little image file uh, icon. And that will show all the images in your folder or all your computer, actually. I'm going to press A to select them all. That's important to do, not just the first one. And press Add Movie Strip. Depending on how many images you have in that folder, it might take a while for, for Blender to load them all into the um, video sequence editor. So there they are. Um, I can press A to deselect all, then A to select all. If the outline on the images are lighter, that means that it's selected. If they're darker, if they're more black or dark blue, that means they're not selected anymore. So I'll press A. And just like in the 3D viewport, I can press G to grab them all and slide them over or move their their track, doesn't matter what track they're in really. Uh, I move it down to frame zero, I believe. And there's my animation. Of course, if it's zoomed in, I can, or zoomed out, I can scroll up and down with my mouse in this part of the window and change my view. I'm going to go ahead and change my timeline again. We've only got 40 frames, so I'm going to type 40 in the end. And 
we're going to change our render settings again. We're going to match the exact same settings that we had for the original render. So I'm going to change the dimensions to 1280 by 720 and 100%. We're at 24 frames per second. We're starting at frame 1, we're ending at frame 40. Um, we're going to output to the desktop this time. So I'm going to go to the desktop. And I'm actually going to give this a file name because this is going to be our video file. So I'm going to uh, type box underscore anim and press accept. Of course, if you leave that blank, it'll just name it probably 0001-0040, which means frame 1 to frame 40. Um, and it'll be the file type that you specify, which we'll do right now. We're not going to render out to a still image sequence again. We're going to render out to a MUI file. When you're rendering out to a MUI file, which can be an AVI codec, AVI JPEG, AVI RAW, H.264, MPEG, uh, OGG, or XVID, uh, these are all standard video types. There's a lot more, but Blender only supports, as far as I know, these ones uh, by default. My favorite is H.264, because that's the standard for iOS, iPods, and iPhones, and iPads. Um, and it's a pretty good compressed video type. Um, so we've got our output directory, we've selected our file type. Depending on what video type that you select, you will either get, or you may get, an encoding section. The H.264 does have it. I believe the AVI JPEG does not have um, any options, really, except for the quality. Uh, so I'll choose H.264 again, and we can choose or change any of these values for the quality of the video, um, but we can also choose presets as well. I'm going to go ahead and choose the preset H.264. Um, and that'll set up um, what it thinks is an appropriate bitrate. So the uh, default for H.264 is 6,000, which is quite high. Anything higher than 1,500 is a pretty good bitrate, um, I think, depending on the quality and the file size that you need. So I'll just leave that at 6,000, and we'll take a look at our file size after we make the movie file. I'm going to leave everything as it is. We've got a bitrate of 192 for the audio, but we don't have any audio. Um, so I haven't actually assigned an audio codec, but you can add in this video sequence editor a, um, a sound file and have sound in your movie, in which case you could select um, probably MP3 or AZ3 or AAC would be good choices. Uh, and 192 is probably fine. I don't have any sound, so I'm not going to worry about that. Um, I think that's pretty much it. We've chosen a video file type. We've changed. We've selected a preset. We've got a bitrate of 6,000, a resolution of 1280 by 720, not 740. I'm not sure why I typed that. Um, and frame 1 to frame 40. Let's go ahead and press animation. And this time it should render out to a video file. And you notice it happens much quicker because it doesn't have to calculate all the light bouncing. So let's go ahead and, and minimize that. And on my desktop, there should be a, uh, ignore that video file, um, a video file, that, that's the one that we just rendered out. It's called boxanim0001-0040.avi. We chose H.264, which is a codec, which is inside of an AVI movie file. It's the co video codec used for, or the compression type used in an AVI file most of the time, or sometimes. I can double click on that. That should open up in a video player if you have a decent one installed. Um, I'm using Media Player Classic, but another good one is, and it's an open source one I believe, is VLC Media Player, which is a good one for the Macintosh as well. There's the animation. It looks pretty good. Let's take a look at the file size. So a 40 frame animation is just about one megabyte. Um, and that was with a bitrate of 6,000. So you can imagine that if you had a much longer animation, it would be proportionally bigger, um, in which case you might want to turn this down. But uh, there are also video editing tools or video conversion tools that will let you change that bitrate. It was a very fast process to render out from still images that were already rendered to a video file, so you can always experiment with these video file types. And I think that's where this video is going to end off. Thanks a lot for watching, and I'll see you next time.